Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this series of videos, we will be focusing our attention on the steel connection workflow for designing gusset connections for a variety of different vertical bracing situations. The different vertical brace joints that we have available in RAM Connection Standalone include the column beam brace joint, the vertical X brace joint, a chevron brace, and also a column base with a gusset connection. Each of these different joints have different column, beam, and brace sections that are permitted to be used in that connection type, and several of these particular joints can also support seismic provisions. We will now turn our attention to our RAM Connection Standalone application, where as you can see, we've already created several different types of joints that will require gusset connections. For this particular video, we're going to be designing a column beam brace gusset connection, and we're going to be using joint number one to accomplish that process. Once you're ready to start your connection design process, you can select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. In the connection assignment dialog, you're going to notice that the filter has already been selected as a column beam brace joint in the vertical bracing category. That being said, the program has also filtered the types of gusset connections that might be appropriate. Now it's important to note that all gusset connections in RAM connection are considered smart connections where the program will be able to perform an iteration to determine the appropriate weld size, plate sizes, and so forth. Now for each type of joint, you may have a variety of different types of configurations that are available to you. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look and pick the one that would best suit our needs. For this particular exercise, I'm gonna go with this one. This is a column beam brace joint, and it's a directly welded connection. That basically means that my gusset connection, or my gusset plate, will be welded to my beam and my column. Once I've selected the template I'm interested in, I will click on the Assign button. Now once the connection assignment is complete, I will be able to see the interaction ratio in the joint selection area. Now, what I wanna do whenever taking a look at this information is I wanna ensure that I am seeing the controlling interaction ratio. To ensure that that is the case, I'm gonna to go to the Home tab of the ribbon toolbar and make sure the critical load condition icon is selected. When this is selected, it basically means that this is the interaction ratio that was the worst case scenario and not just for the currently selected load case in the status bar. Now that I've reviewed my interaction ratio, I can see that my current connection design is passing. My interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is in green, meaning no warnings were encountered. Now, as I'm taking a look at this gusset connection, I may decide, even though it's passing the code check, that I wanna customize some of the detailing. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the Design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the Edit icon. Now, this is a gusset connection, so I'm gonna select the Gusset option. Now for any connection in RAM connection standalone, you're gonna select the joint in the joint selection area and edit the connection, which will bring up the connection pad. Through the connection pad, you can review all of the input parameters. What you're gonna notice is that all of your input parameters have a little blue arrow adjacent to them. 
This means that this type of parameter was set up either through the code information or the joint area. These type of parameters need to be adjusted in those areas of the program, and if you did make modifications here, they would not be saved to the connection. Anything else, however, that does not have a blue arrow, you can customize and save to the connection once you exit the connection pad. Now the area I like to look at for the gusset connections is this interfaces area. Here you're going to notice that we organize the parameters depending upon their interface. Okay. Now a beam gusset brace connection can have basically four braces. So that's why we have our upper right, upper left, lower left, and lower right brace. Now you may not have all of these brace members in your particular joint, but they're all available here and you're going to select the appropriate one. If you selected an interface that wasn't appropriate, you're going to go ahead and see that this area is not enabled. So let's go ahead and take a look at the detailing of this particular connection. And as I take a look, everything looks good to me, uh, except for this particular connection. Since I have an HSS brace, what I would prefer to do is to detail it where instead of having this extra plate member that's then bolted to the gusset, I'd prefer just having my brace member welded to my gusset. And that's my preference for how I'd like to detail this joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get that to work with still yielding a passing connection design. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now our braces are on the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my upper right brace first. Now when you take a look at your bracing connections, you have several different options here. So this is the gusset. This is the thickness of the gusset and the material. That looks fine to me, but then I can customize the gusset to the brace connection, the gusset to the column connection, and the gusset to the beam connection. The column and beam connections look fine to me, but I want to customize the gusset to brace connection. So I'm going to select that option, and then I'll be able to see any parameters that I might want to modify. So here I can see that the connection type has been set to bolted by default. And this might be appropriate if I had another type of section for my bracing member, maybe a channel or an angle. I might like the um, bolted option. But for this particular example, I'd prefer to see if a welded solution would work. Now I changed that to welded. It went ahead and redrew that gusset to the proper dimensions for that type of connection. And then I can see the weld lengths, the weld type, and the weld sides can all be customized. I have a passing connection design, so I'm thinking this is the way I'm going to go. So I've modified my upper right brace. Now I'm going to go to my lower right brace. Now I should see the same types of parameters that I could specify for this area. And again, I'm going to go to my gusset to brace connection and go from bolted to welded. Now, as I take a look at my detailing, everything here looks good to me. Now in the ribbon toolbar, I can see that my connection is currently passing. My interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is in green, meaning I did pass all code checks without any errors or warnings. Now, if I'd like to see some further information, including the types of calculations that were performed, I can click on the results icon. This will bring up your steel connection report. From this report, you'll be able to see all of your input data, your forces that this connection is required to resist, and I'll also see the checks that were performed and the status of each of them. The last thing I'm also going to notice is I'm going to notice the code reference that was used to arrive at this result. And the length of this report would be dependent upon how many braces you had in your particular joint. Now, if you'd like some additional information regarding the calculations, click on this icon up here. This is the view formulas icon. With that option selected, you'll be able to see all of the equations and variables that were used to arrive at the results 
if you're looking for that level of detail. Now at this point, since I do have a passing connection design, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the report. The last thing I'm going to take a look at while in the connection pad is my DXF view. You're going to notice that for every single joint or connection design that you have in RAM connection standalone, you can view the DXF and you can export this DXF drawing. You can also customize your layers and your font information. Now at this point, I did make changes to this connection type. These changes can be accepted and saved after the connection pad is closed if I click on the save icon. Now that I've done that, let me go ahead and close out of the connection pad and I'll be able to see the thumbnail image has now been updated to include the graphic of the changes that I made and if the interaction ratio had changed, that would be updated as well. Now at this point, this concludes our process for designing a column beam brace joint in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.